Next up, I'm uh, pleased to introduce uh, Sanders, uh, Bernie Sanders surrogate, Chris Newbert, Bernie Rural Political Coordinator in Iowa. He's a Fulbright Scholar at the University of North Carolina, PhD candidate, and a former CCI organizer. Let's welcome Chris Newbert. Right. Test, test. Do you want me to sit down? Yeah. Come, this is, this is our lounge chair, okay. and we, we just chat about right. stuff. That's how it goes. Do you want to ask me a question first, or would you like me to give, a, give my quick pitch? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead with a, okay. a quote from an organization called LandCorp, Aria McLaughlin's co-founder. In a time of political division, soil health is an issue of common ground for all Americans. The more we learn about soil, the more we understand that soil health is a keystone issue that directly solves a plethora of urgent economic and natural resources related issues. So your question, you know, we've talked all day about the crises and the particular crises from the trade war to higher input costs, but can you speak generally to the commitment of the Sanders presidency to helping family farms gain back their financial freedom, rebuild their land, and increase rural prosperity? Give us the picture so we can get a deeper dive into where the Sanders campaign is coming from on this. Okay, sure. Um, so one thing I want to talk about first, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to go too far into the weeds right away here on specific policy points because I think um, one thing that I've heard all day, um, all year, uh, for the last decade, even longer, um, I've only been around for the last decade or so, so this is still some newer to me than it is to folks like Francis or Chris or Brad, um, others who've been working on this stuff for a long time, have had the policy solutions in their heads for a long time, and have been pounding the pavement over and over, year after year, saying the same things and not getting anywhere. And that is because, in my mind, this is my opinion, and I think the opinion of the Sanders campaign, too many of the people that we elect have Farm Bureau in their ear and in their pocketbook, and we also do not have the mass movement that is required to force those elected officials to actually give a damn about family farmers and about the health of our soil. And that is what is fundamentally different about this campaign and what we are trying to do. Um, the, the, the tagline that we have, not me, us, is not, you know, that's not a joke. We take it incredibly seriously, and we see that on display in a week like we just had, in a week that's coming up, where the senator is going to be involved in impeachment hearings and is not going to be in Iowa nearly as much as he would like, but is able to s deploy our surrogates to get people out to spread that message because it is not just about this one single man. It is about all of us coming together to actually say and stand up to corporations and say that we need to actually fix the crisis that's going on on the ground. Um, because it, you're gonna get into this in a little bit, uh, and I've heard this many times, the independent family farmer will not survive another farm crisis. And the independent family farmer cannot succeed if we have uh, intense climate change, intense soil loss at the rate that we're seeing right now. So we need a radical transformation. We do not have time to sit around and wait and fiddle with the farm, beer, farm bill every four or five years like that. This has got to happen. It's got to happen now um, simply because the stakes, if we don't take it on, and meet it with the, with the actual seriousness and the enormity that the crisis presents, um, then I really worry about the future of agriculture and then, you know, the future of rural America and um, everything else in turn. The, the whole, the country as a whole. Absolutely. It's the backbone. That was great. Um, I'm high-fiving. Uh, I'm supposed to just not be too excited about things, but I, I love that. Um, while large corporations who sell patented seeds, fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides keep making massive profits from, from U.S. farmers, most farmers themselves are looking at razor-sharp margins or are severely in debt, even though many of them are producing more than they ever have. How will a Sanders administration address the issue and help farming communities raise their profits and reduce input costs? Sure. Um, and I think one of the things to... Uh, that's important to look at that's going to be a priority under a, an, a Sanders administration uh, is to ensure that farmers actually are getting a fair price for the goods that they produce. Um, we're looking at uh, supply management, we're looking at parity pricing, we're looking at a national grain reserve, we're looking at this stuff that we have known for a long time would be beneficial 
to the family farmers of America and would also be able to transition us away from a subsidy system. Rather than subsidizing large corporations, we're actually going to create a platform where farmers are going to be able to get a fair and living wage and they're not going to have to be dependent on subsidies. The other thing that I think is going to be a priority is actually creating markets for, um, I mean, essentially things that aren't pork, corn, and soybeans. 75% of the farmland in Iowa right now is basically only producing two crops every year. And that's a serious problem, especially when you have grocery stores closing down in rural communities because you don't actually have food being produced in this state. Uh, Iowa imports between 80 and 90% of its food every year. And for a state that is supposed to be feeding the world, that is, I, I think, should terrify a lot of people. Um, so I, I forget what the, the original premise of the question was. But, but I think, what I think where you were like, going to on that front was addressing how are we creating markets for farmers so that they aren't stuck in the current paradigm. We have to actually do the work to open up markets and incentivize Absolutely. that because, and, and you know, look, at, I, I look think, at regional economies. Right. And a traditional capitalist will tell you, well, if there's a demand, a market just magically happens. And I think anyone who has been involved in farming for a long time knows that that isn't what actually happens. You have to create and foster the economic conditions for a market to emerge, and that's done through a variety of means. That's done through policy. That's done through science. Um, and you know, we, we could say we've here. just done that on on this other side for, yeah. for many, many years. So Absolutely. favoring that. Um, let's talk about the Green New Deal. Okay, I would love to. So it's many leaders in farming, many here, many out in these communities we know, are ready and willing to step up in terms of getting involved, adding their expertise, even training, becoming trainers, basically elevating how much they can help. How will, a Bernie's, how will Bernie's Green New Deal plan not be a top-down plan, but support farmers, leading farmers of all size, transition to ecologically regenerative agricultural practices that rebuild rural communities, protect the climate, and strengthen the environment. And because you're talking about a $410 billion investment. So I want to know, in terms of empowering and actually giving the leadership to farmers, you know, this is sort of a leading question because it's mm -hmm. happening inside the, the, the Bernie uh, campaign as a whole, I just wanted to know what does that look like in terms of giving that power, not us, not me, us, to farmers, not the top-down approach. Absolutely. And I, I think part of it, um, you know, comes from with how the Green New Deal was generated. You know, this wasn't an idea that Bernie woke up with one day and said, oh my goodness, this has to happen. Um, it generated and came about through working with organizations who've been on the ground. Um, farm organizations, environmental organizations, labor organizations, folks who recognize that if we don't actually come together, we cannot address this climate crisis. Um, the scale is simply too large for one person to be able to do it alone um, with the essential plan. And the Green New Deal, uh, you know, is, as it's proposed right now, is a resolution uh, in front of Congress that outlines a certain framework. Um, the other thing that a Sanders administration would be able to do is appoint the sort of cabinet officials that actually come from this community, that are actually involved in family farming, that have actually seen the effects of the climate crisis. Because a lot of what happens when you pass legislation is that you get into you know, the arcane. Everyone you know, thinks once you've passed a bill, it's done, and we can move on to something else. But there's a lot of stuff that happens at an administrative level in the rulemaking process, and you need to have the right people in those positions who know who they are actually accountable to. And it's not lob a lot of these, you know, it's not oil executives, and it's not Farm Bureau. It's the folks like I see in this room right now who actually understand and get what's going on. Okay, our time is running out. Okay. Um, it's, it's a busy end of our day. I wish we had more time. The, the last question, we need to have super fast answer. Would you rather do national security or climate? Well, I think we can do both. Okay, how will the Sanders administration bring attention to this as a national security and empower farmers to be the heroes that address it? Uh, you're right. It and does I think include climate. Yeah, Brilliant. because I think, and, and you know, Bernie said this in 2016 when he was asked what is the most pressing national security issue that we are facing, and he said climate change. And people laughed then, and now they get it because he's absolutely right. This is a global catastrophe. If it goes on, it would create um, climate refugees all over the world and here in Iowa. You know, if we just sit and think about what happens if folks can't actually farm anymore, you know, where are people going to go? What is this state going to look like? Um, these are the issues that, you know, create 
I think, serious chaos globally that we actually need to forcefully consider and address. So, I wish we had more time, but let's give it up for Chris Newbert with the Bernie Sanders campaign. Thank you.